So did you do it? It's 10.46 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, September 26, 2018. And we're looking at the earth.nullschool.net. And I find this awesome and relevant. Check this out. We're looking at the uh, Gulf Stream here. Kind of takes off into the ocean at about the North Carolina area. Just worms its way around. For some reason it decides to send currents off to the left and then back south again along the coast. There's a hot spot here. And it kind of neanders off. And there's another hot spot over here in the North Atlantic. But I'm going to zoom in right over here. We've got Massachusetts here, Woods Hole Institute is there. We got Halifax, Nova Scotia. I'm gonna look in here. Apparently it's about uh, 9.4 degrees above Fahrenheit above average. First I better tell you, I've got it set on the ocean mode. The currents are to be animated and the sea surface temperature anomalies is my overlay. All right, I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm just looking at this anomaly. All right, I'm going to jump around a little bit, but I'm going to leave you all the links. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take you over to here. I'll start you out at the Great Meteor Hotspot Track search I did a while back. And the Great Meteor Hotspot Track, also referred to as the New England Hotspot Track, is a vast trail of hotspot magnetism in the Northern Hemisphere. It extends over 5,800 kilometers from Nunavut, Northern Canada, to the Northern Atlantic Ocean. Well, where's none of it? Well, it's up there. All right, so let me go back here to this search. Now, it calls it the Great Meteor Hotspot Track, and if I have time, I'm going to show you why they call it that. I'll take you to the, I'm going to leave you this link either way, but the Blue Marble Earth will show you why they refer it to as a Meteor Hotspot Track. But right now, I'm going to take you over to this so we can take it all in for just a second and I'm going to take you to this which is a, a series of sea mounts that is in the middle of this hot spot track all right now this happens to be a PDF document from isa.org and I'll leave you that but I'm gonna jump you over to this article and I'm gonna do some reading sorry in advance all right we're at the Woods Hole Institute the Oceanographic Institute with this article, Hot Spots and Cool Volcanoes. If you drain the water from, from the ocean's basin, some of the most dramatic features you would see are groups or lines of underwater volcanoes called seamounts, sometimes in the clusters and other times stretching across the ocean basin for many miles. Perhaps the best known of these is the Hawaiian Islands Emperor Seamount chain that stretches over 6,000 kilometers from Hawaii to the near the Aleutian Islands west of Alaska. But there is also a seamount chains in the Atlantic Ocean, including the New England seamounts. How do these chains chain of how do these chains of volcanoes form? The bottom graph shows in red the height of the land and depth of the seafloor along the hotspot track. Blue lines show the seafloor depths surrounding the seamounts to emphasize the volcano heights. In some places on Earth, even beneath the middle middle of the tectonic plates, isolated plumes of hot material rise from deep within the mantle. These are called hot spots. As the plume melts, it erupts to form volcanoes. The volcanic activity then dies down for a while, but the tectonic plate above keeps moving. When the plume erupts again, a new volcano forms on the seafloor. If this happens many times over millions of years, a line of seafloor volcanoes will be formed. This line of volcano records, volcanoes records the direction of the tectonic plate was moving over geologic time. Sometimes plates change direction. The bend in Hawaiian Islands Emperor Seamount chain shows such a change about 35 million years ago. The New England Seamounts in the western North Atlantic are the middle portion of a long-lived hotspot chain that extends from Canada to undersea volcanoes in, on the African tectonic plate. The operative words here are long-lived means it's living. So let's go back over here. This, on this PDF, I'm going to jump down to this, these uh, beautiful images. The Manning Seamount, I want to zero in on this feature back here. Look at that tall feature with a shadow. I need to look into that. I just wanted to bring that up before we got done with this video. Now, if in fact these seamounts have anything to do with this hot spot, you see how the currents are kind of sweeping around. Then we might. We I think I need a little more evidence or proof to you know to substantiate you know my theory here. So 
Maybe we should check out the sulfur dioxide levels and see if there's any kind of readings. So let's do that. Okay, so I got it on the mode is in well, chemical mode. Wait a minute, here it is. I got it on the chemical mode now at earth.noschool.net. Sulfur dioxide surface mass. And we're lucky today because we got winds going off the ocean, which eliminates the possibility of land-based origin for the sulfur dioxide. Now I'm picking up readings out here off the coast that are 1.08 huge I don't know how to say that but we're picking up readings off the coast heading towards the coast let's see there's a uh, Massachusetts there's Massachusetts there's that hot spot so I mean I'm not trying to make the connection for you guys but I'm just showing you that there's a lot of stuff to look into and here's something else interesting I want to try to get in I'm looking at the World sea temperature and water surface temperatures and Halifax sea temperature. Last updated September 27th. Data on seawater temperature in Halifax collected from open sources use a satellite map and temperatures provided by the NOAA, NOAA. Well, now we're in trouble. To improve the accuracy, oh boy, let's check this out. Forecast for sea temperature in Halifax for the next 10 days. They've got it going up to 86 degrees. 